sketch the graph of f of x equal to sine of x over 1 plus cosine of x on the open interval minus pi to pi. First issue we have to deal with will be the domain. So we're given the domain is minus pi to pi. So we might be worried about division by zero in our region. So we want to know where does 1 plus cosine of x equals zero. Well, that's where cosine of x equals minus 1. So if you note, cosine is going to be the x value on the unit circle. So the x value will be minus 1 if I'm at pi or minus pi. And we've already excluded those points from our domain. Now, at those points for the function we're dividing by 0, sine of x is also going to be 0 at those points. Okay, remember, sine is the y value on the unit circle. At that point there, y is equal to 0. So I have 0 over 0. So we're going to be given that the vertical asymptotes occur at those points. They're not going to have a nice limit. They're going to go off to plus and minus infinity. So we'll take that as a given. What we won't take as a given is which direction do they go in. Now, let's take a look at our unit circle to see how the function behaves near our asymptotes. OK, if I'm looking at minus pi, so I'm going to be coming from 0 into the direction of minus pi. On a unit circle, we start at 0, go in the direction of minus pi. So that means I'm going clockwise. When I'm in this quadrant here, the sign is going to be negative. Okay, sign is the y value. So we have a minus over 1 plus cosine of x. Now cosine of x is always greater than or equal to minus 1. So 1 plus cosine of x is always greater than or equal to 0. That means if I'm not at pi or minus pi, 1 plus cosine of x is going to be a positive number. So when I'm in this quadrant, our function is going to be a minus over a positive or a minus. So our values are going to be negative near the asymptote at x equal to minus pi. So that means we're going to run down to minus infinity. For x equal to pi, we're going to come into there from the left. So what's going to happen? We're going to go from 0 to pi. So if I do that, we're going to go along the top arc. That means we're looking at what's happening in this quadrant when we're near pi. So let's see what happens. Sine of x is going to be positive. The y value is positive here. 1 plus cosine of x is positive by the way we reasoned before. So positive over positive gives me a positive. So when I get near pi, our function is going to go off to plus infinity because the numbers near pi are going to be positive for our function. OK. That's behavior near the asymptotes. How about if we look for zeros? How can my function be equal to 0? Well, that'll only happen if the numerator is equal to 0 or sine of x is equal to 0. Sine is going to be the y value in the unit circle. So the only way that can be 0 is at x equals 0 or at these points back here at minus pi and pi. We're throwing those points at minus pi and pi away. They're the vertical asymptotes. So I only have to worry about the point at 0. So we plot that. That's that point right here. What's left? Well, that's everything I can do with just the function. So now we're going to take the derivative and see what we can get in terms of critical points increasing and decreasing. So I take the derivative. We have a quotient. So we're going to use the quotient rule. So low d high less high d low over low squared. What do we get? After I go through that, what do you notice? OK, let's clean this up. The signs are going to go together. Minus signs drop out, leaving me with a sine squared. And then my first term, I'm going to have cosine x plus cosine squared. So the cosine squared plus sine squared give me a 1. So our numerator is 1 plus cosine of x. The bottom, which is low squared, is going to be 1 plus cosine of x, quantity squared. We'll have a 1 plus cosine of x canceling on the top and bottom. My derivative is. 1 over 1 plus cosine of x. By the reasoning we did before, 1 plus cosine of x is either 0 or positive. We know where it was going to be 0 at our asymptotes, so we don't worry about that. So this thing is going to be positive in our region. Okay, Our derivative is positive in the region, which means we're always increasing. So I put my box in. We fill it with increasing. 
That's everything I can do with the first derivative. So I move to the second derivative, and we look for inflection points, regions of concave up, concave down. I do my second derivative, so I have first derivative is 1 plus cosine of x to the minus first power. So we use a chain rule. Minus 1 comes down. Exponent becomes a minus 2. We leave the inside alone, and then we multiply by its derivative. Derivative of 1 plus cosine of x is minus sine x. So my second derivative cleans up the look like sine of x over 1 plus cosine of x squared. So right there. Now, we're interested in when this thing is 0 or undefined. Okay, we don't have to worry about undefined. We know that the denominator is going to be 0 when we're at the asymptotes, so that's not an issue. So I want to know where the numerator is equal to 0. That's the only way my function can be equal to 0. So we care about when sine of x is 0. So that'll be at, okay, remember it's the y value. Sine of x is 0 here or here. So it's going to be at 0 or at pi minus pi. And we don't worry about pi or minus pi, so it's just 0. So we're going to have point here. We mark it off. And then we're going to check one point on each side to look for concave up or concave down. One point in each region, I'll use minus pi halves and pi halves. If I put pi halves into my second derivative, I'm going to get a 1 to come out. Okay, note, sine of pi halves is 1, cosine of pi halves is 0. That's positive, so I'm going to get concave up in that region. If I put minus pi halves in, the sine of that's going to be a minus 1. And then cosine of minus pi halves is 0, so we'll have a 1 in the bottom. So I get a negative number. That means I'm going to be concave down in this region. That's everything I can do. So now I just need to connect the dots. Let's look at our regions. On this region, I'll have increasing concave down. We we'll take our point at 0, and then we're going to connect that to our asymptote. So that looks like that. On the other side, I have increasing concave up. So I go from our 0, go all the way up to the asymptote like that. And that's what that side of the function looks like. So that's what our function looks like from minus pi to pi.